Hello students, we will now move on to the next topic of SM module 1 which is assembler design options. So far in the previous videos we had seen machine dependent features as well as machine independent features. Okay, so in this topic we will see the various options to create assemblers. So you have already seen there is one pass assembler okay, and there is two pass assembler. So in two pass assembler we saw how SIC XC works it is using two passes it generates object uh, codes and further object program and in one pass uh, assembler we have seen in the form of SIC right along with uh, SIC there is one more um, uh, version of one pass assembler known as load and go assembler okay this also creates object codes in one pass itself. But the difference between one pass and load go is in one pass you create the object program but then in load pass object program is not created okay it is uh, at the runtime we load the missing addresses i'll tell you what is missing addresses okay using an example so know that load pass is uh, load and go is uh, one kind of uh, one pass uh, assembler clear Okay, so you can go through these statements given in load and go. I'll just explain you in a simple way using an example here. Okay, now, so this is uh, similarly like uh, SIC. In SIC, if you know the uh, first two bits is for the op code and then the four places here is directly the address right if you remember SIC but in SIC XC it involves relative uh, addressing that is including PC base and flags we don't require that in SIC so this is not a pass to it generates uh, um, object code in uh, one single uh, go okay yeah now look at this this is a very simple program you know EOF is a constant so that is created word 3 is a constant this is also a constant this is uh, reserving uh, space okay yeah now come to STL RTDR fine this is a label yeah which has been defined way before this instruction that means you can directly place the address of RETADR in the address place it is 1009 this is not a problem but then when you arrive at this particular instruction which is JSEB RDREC you will see that RDREC has not been defined before that means there will be no information of RDREC in the symbol table to pick the address right so what we do in load and go assembler is that we only write the opcode which is the first two places that is given in the um, program right JSEB and then we leave the next four places with respect to address of RTREC empty because we have still not found RDREC because RDREC comes at the end okay it comes in the end similarly LDA is there a problem with LDA length no because length has been defined way before this instruction so directly put the address of length here okay now is in is there any problem with uh, comp 0 no right because zero has been defined way before this instruction so this is not a problem but these are a problem wherein the uh, operands are defined at the later point of uh, time so this problem is called as forward references okay so if there are operands which involves memory addresses which are defined at a later point of time then they are called as forward references clear okay now how do we deal with forward references in uh, load and go assembler now here as i said you leave the places empty of those uh, operands which are defined at a later point of time so what do we do is see take this this is at the load time we will define the addresses now look at this guys okay here I'll have to juggle between the two now here look at this yeah this instruction JSEP RDREC right yeah now at 2012 position know that each position to holds two 
letters or two numbers or two hexes. I will tell according in the language of assembly code, each address holds two hexes. Okay, that means in 2012, you have two hexes, which is 48. That means in the next address, that is in 2013, you will hold these two empty places. In 2014, you will hold these two empty places. Then comes 2015, right? So, what happens is, at 2013th place and at 2014th place, you have blank places, right? Spaces, which means what? That the necessary operand or the label has not been encountered yet, right? So, whenever RDREC is encountered, the place which is empty, that is 2030, 13 should be loaded with the address of RDRC which is 2003D, uh, um, right? Okay, so here in the symbol table, you know that uh, symbol table consists of uh, symbol names and its uh, uh, associated addresses, right? But when we see RDRC in the previous one, RDRC was not yet defined. So in the entry of RDRC, you say that I don't know the value yet, but then whenever it is found, we will have to fill it at address 2013. Similarly, end uh, FIL, its address is not yet found, but when we find it, you, we will have to start filling the address from location 2001. I will just explain with respect to RDRC. So, whenever we go down like this, we will find that RDRC REC is at address 2003D, right? So, that entry is made here, that is um, 2000. Its address is entered here 2003D, but this address should also be loaded, right, at place 2013, okay. So, I have written here, here, if you go through here, you will find that at 2000, okay, at uh, 2000, uh, 2000 here, you will have to fill the 20 at this place okay sorry this place 2013 right so 2000 see this is 0 1 2 3 so 2010 plus 3 is 2013 so from that place you will have to fill 203 d similar to similarly to end fill you will have to do the same whichever place uh, is empty right from that place you will have to fill the address of the label i hope this is clear to you guys okay it is very simple so know that in uh, load and go assembler which is a kind of a one pass assembler we don't generate object program directly we will load the address at the runtime itself that what happens is if the if there is a, a problem of forward reference that place is left empty and whenever that particular uh, label is found at a later point of time we also make an entry in the symbol table with respect to where that address has to be written to okay yeah so we had made uh, an entry in the rdrc uh, uh, entry saying that if the address of rdrc is found then that address has to be filled from 2013 location so we have found 23d has the address of rdrc and we'll have to fill it at 2013th position similarly for all the forward references this has been shown you need to keep in mind that for each of the address we store two hexa as you can see for 1000 there is 4 5 with respect to eof okay eof was the first instruction right so instruction so at 1000 we have 45 at 1001 we have 4 uh, f and then at 1002 we have have 4, 6. Okay, that is how it is stored. Now, coming to the other uh, option for assembler design which is uh, multi, -plus, uh, multi pass uh, assembler. This is a very, very, very important question and very, very easy also. So, as the name says, this is uh, having more than uh, one, uh, uh, more than two pass because two pass is maximum with two pass assembler, right? So, more than two passes scans the programs more than twice, right? So, when converting assembly language to machine language you will have to have more than two passes this is called as multi-pass assembler and this is the universal example that is taken in every textbook so you will be asked with the same example clear okay it is very simple to understand let's 
look how it is done okay now we'll have to process every instruction one at a time so considering uh, the first instruction which is um, half sz equ max length i hope you guys know what max uh, equ is right which is nothing but half sz is equated to this expression which is max length divided by 2 so uh, when you see this particular expression or any instruction for that matter what you should do is here you will, this is a symbol table, right? In the symbol table, you will have to enter the label here. That is a new symbol, which is half Z, right? And what is the expression of half Z? It is uh, max length divided by 2. And what is this second uh, value here? It means that we don't know the value of max length because it has not been encountered uh, yet. So, we have one unknown argument so it is represented by ampersand one which means in half z there is one unknown argument which has not been encountered so far in the symbol table that is why we write it as ampersand n and uh, this is for uh, linking because um, we need to have linked list that you will get to know here next since half z is seen and in uh, half z we saw max length we will enter max length also into the symbol table but with no value because max length is not yet uh, defined or seen so it is given a value star and we will also have a pointer to a linked list indicating that whenever we find the address of max length it will be used in half Z. This is what it means. Whenever you find max length, you will have to use this value of max length in half Z. That is why you give a pointer to this linked list. Okay. So, this is with respect to the first instruction. Now, now go to the second instruction. Second instruction is now max length EQU buffer and buffer. So, now in the symbol table, you have half Z. You have max length which is undefined and then now you will have to make two more uh, entry for symbols uh, buff end and buffer which are still not defined okay so if you see the structure of the symbol table you see that this the first statement was uh, already written okay now since max length has been defined freshly with the value buff end minus buffer so you will replace with its ex expression buff end minus buffer and what is this ampersand 2 because there are two symbols or labels which are not defined yet so we have two unknown arguments okay two unknown symbols clear and uh, since buff end and buffer has been seen here, we will have to create an entry in the symbol table. And star indicates that uh, it has not been defined yet. And this is a pointer which indicates that if buff end is found, its value should be replaced in max length. If buffer is found, its value to be replaced in uh, max length. Okay, this is what happens when the second instruction is encountered, which is max length, um, which is equated to buff end minus buffer. Okay. Now, we will go to the third instructions. In third instruction, we have PRE VBT which is equated to buffer minus 1. Okay. So, here this is a new symbol that is seen. So, you will have to make an entry in the symbol table with respect to PRE VBT. So, how do you make an entry here in the symbol table? Just look at this guys. So, it's a new entry which is PRVBT and what is its expression? It is buffer minus 1. And why is it ampersand 1? Because buffer is, um, it's a, uh, we don't know the value right yet. So, it is ampersand 1, okay. Uh, that is one unknown argument is there, okay. 0 means it does not have to refer to any of the previous uh, values, clear. Okay, that means uh, the PRVBT value is not used elsewhere, clear. But what about uh, uh, buffer? In buffer, uh, when the value of buffer is found, it has to be replaced in max. Also, it has to be replaced in PR. PRE VBT that is what we have created one more uh, a pointer to the linked list because buffer term is used in two places in max length and uh, PRE VBT okay now let's move on to the next instruction the next instruction is uh, nothing but buffer RESB 4096 which means what 
when this instruction is seen okay um, here you know that uh, buffer star what is star mean you know that star means it is the current location value so let's assume that the location value of buffer so let's assume that the location value of buffer uh, is 1034 so you will have to replace 1034 here because we had mentioned star right? star means the current location counter value of buffer which is assumed to be 1034 is replaced in this place okay so 1034 is written so what happens when you write 1034 wherever this buffer was uh, uh, used those places will have to replace values of buffer with 1034 okay so we will see that change okay see look at this guys wherever you had uh, buffer see this was um, buffer minus 1 which is 1034 minus 1 now becomes 1033 here see here this becomes 1033 and uh, what about uh, the max length one buffer in minus buffer you can now write it as buffer in minus 1034 right yeah 1034 and then what is the other change that you have, you have to make that is when you found the value of buffer has 1034 you have now replaced PRE VBT so you can cancel out this list okay and but max uh, length uh, you have replaced it right so you can cancel out this also so max length and um, PR VBT uh, in that in those two instructions we have replaced the value of buffer with 1034 okay now coming to the next instruction okay so which is the next instruction let us go through the next instruction here yeah the next instruction is buffing EQU star. Now you know what star is, right? What is star? Star is the location value of buffing. Now, how do you find the location value of buffing? Do you know that the location value of buffer is 1034, which we have assumed in this case. Now, this 4096 is in uh, decimal, right? So, if you convert uh, this into um, uh, hexa, you get it as thousand okay and if you add this thousand to thousand thirty four you get the next address as two thousand thirty four so wherever there is buffin since there is a star here which means the location counter of buffin should be taken so it has to be replaced with two thousand thirty four that is uh, buffin value should be replaced with two thousand thirty four so let us now move to the last um, instruction okay so as I mentioned so this is what you need to do okay now here in this case what happens now you know that the value of buffend is 2034 right so the buffend value has been replaced as 2034 now since buffend value is now found it should be used in max length right so if you replace uh, buffend value in max length with 2034 you subtract uh, uh, 1034 from it so max length value will now become 1000 so you can remove this because once you have used the buffend value in max length you can remove this uh, pointer okay so here it is shown here once you have removed it uh, you have removed the pointer now since max length is a thousand because of the subtraction now this value of uh, max length should be used in half a set because it says that whenever the value of max length is found it has to be replaced in half a z right so what happens is um, remember guys this is in hexadecimal right so you can't directly use the value of hexadecimal here what was the um, initial uh, value of uh, uh, max length okay so it is uh, nothing but um, 4096 right okay so here this should be divided by 2 clear which gives you a value 2048 so 2048 which when divide which when converted to hexadecimal you get 800 as the answer okay so that is what is written here fine I hope this is clear to you. This is how the multiplas uh, assembler uh, works. Okay, that is uh, you have to have so many uh, times. You saw it, right? We had many passes here. That is, we had created list, and again after obtaining the value, we replaced in the corresponding instruction. That is how this multiplas assembler works. Clear? Yeah. Thank you.